Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin mazurkas. Today we focus on the last mazurka from Opus 30, mm, mazurka in C sharp minor, Opus 30 number 4. Mm, this mazurka is the, the longest from all this opus and also uh, its structure is the most profound. It's also pianistically the most difficult. Um, let's just listen and I will try to do the short parts part by part so that we will try to go through it and understand it a little bit better. It starts with the introduction. This is the introduction. What what's so special about this introduction? The first chord and immediately we know that Chopin is depressed. It's such a it's so sad this chord. And then as we hear this one note is hesitating. So again we have the hesitation. It's like, um, well, tension and release, tension and release, tension and release. And then to make it worse, another. And here we have two people. Uh, so this person, the bass. two times the same very sad two notes and then in the second part the second person is approaching and singing together so again and then everything starts wow everything starts sotto voce and then starts the beautiful melody so this beginning has a mystery inside Definitely. It's very sad. I think it's very good to do the kind of diminuendo so that every note is touched in a different way. As it, it's going far away. And then it starts. focus now on this one. First left hand, left hand of course is the imitation of uh, some kind of guitar of, or mandolin or some another folk well string instrument played with fingers right so but everything is sotto voce and the right hand Right, right hand is pianistically very difficult. We have uh, all the time thirds and all the time, and there is a lot of these small notes, these appoggiaturas, this, this. Uh, you need to have, you need to have, well, one need to have very fast fingers to play it uh, effortlessly, you know. A little bit like in Mozart. Doesn't it sound a little bit like a bird singing? Just listen. And here we have the scale going down. Something which is extremely difficult to do legato or thirds. For me it helps to use a little bit of pedal. Of course, the diminuendo, which is very important. 
So altogether, well, the, the, the melody in the first, the, mm, the right hand. Dum pa dum pa dum pa 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 dum pa 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 pam pa 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 pam pa 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 pam pa pa pa. It's a mazur. It's a, a very typical mazur, but sotto voce, which means it's very far away. Chopin is very sad here. That's C sharp minor. So C sharp minor is the key uh, with with quite a a big sadness, actually very dark. And then we have this. This. This motif is extremely important because this will this later will appear a lot a lot a lot of times so indeed maybe it's a little bit like a bird singing but Chopin is recalling birds in Poland uh, in the springtime and of course springtime in the love time so when 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 birds are singing they are in love when we hear in Poland we immediately want to fall in love every spring and uh, Chopin of course is suffering so I think one of the the secrets to this place is to play it as as sad as actually possible, and very in, in, in like a ghost, you know, like something not real. So again, everything, what I said before about all the other mazurkas in this opus, the ide fix, the main thought, the main, the key to understand all the mazurkas, something very soft and then something very loud. So mm, this is full of power. Suddenly Chopin has the power to fight fight against the sadness, sadness and then again and now here we have something very special uh, we go back to the same mm, but the same melody that before but a little bit especially the second bar it's repeating many times so it's a, it gets a little bit um, monotonous. Let's listen. And this is the end of part A of part one. It will it will come back later. Uh, this part is very, very interesting. We have like something that is always the same. So this is like a reality. It's also two notes, just like at the beginning. And then we have another motif which every time goes more and more to heaven um, is trying to reach the sky just and it's so poetic it's a, a typical poem just listen we have this very charming and then we go up we, we reach the sky and again we are at, at back to the earth the reality and again, we, we go more higher, and then again, reality, and we go the highest. And then, and then it re it's being repeated two times more, so... And then this note... It's like a signal. 
we are alert, we are alert, and then something new starts. Very Polish. It sounds so Polish that all the Polish people, when they were uh, the emigrants, they probably cried. They were crying listening to this. They were missing Poland, missing the, the independent Poland. And they probably were saying to the Chopin, we can, we can, we can sing uh, text, we can put text into it. That's very easy to put the text into it. But then suddenly something is interrupted. This melody, this very naive melody, simple melody is being interrupted. Listen. Like a, this is like a drums, right? A little bit like like a drum, so like maybe a war or something like that. We are we are scared. We are actually very afraid. And then again we have. And again hesitation. And then it, again the, the same, but with a little bit different difference. We have like uh, two two signals, two bells, which Chopin added here, and it's very important, I think, to put them out. Not so many pianists actually decided to do it when I listened to through the recordings, but I consider it as a well, a, well, not really a mistake, but. As something that they are maybe they are not brave enough to do it. It's we, oh, of course we have the accent, but we have a very long note. And just listen to my idea, uh, how I think Chopin wanted this, because we have the long note, we have the slur, which connects this note to the next note, which is also very long and with the accent. So listen to this again. <laughs> Two, two points, two, two lights in the tunnel, you know. That's, that's something that I think in this mazurka is one of the secrets and it's one of the most important things. It, and it comes just, well, just before the most beautiful part, which is the heart, heart of this mazurka, full of love. But before that, let's go again to this folk melody and let's focus on the rhythm it starts slower with the long note and then it gets gets uh, more and more narrow right and the last note must be played a little later like a typical polish muzzle so let's do it the key which Chopin always used when he wants to talk about love. B major. Nocturno, opus 9 number 3, or this Nocturno. So warm. Or the 
third movement of Chopin third sonata. And there are so many, so many examples. But uh, here we have the same spirit, the same key and the same spirit. Here we are shouting, we are shouting something. It's like I love you, I love you, I will love you for the rest of my life and please, why can't you be mine, for example. But it starts a little shy. answer. Just amazing phrase. Listen again. Again, the second time. And then shouting. And then to this shouting, the answer. Oh. again the second time the same thing something that must have shocked all the critics, all the composers, all the musicologists at that time. This is the harmony. It must, it must have been a shock. Nobody wrote like that at that time. It's completely innovative and uh, very brave to do. Chopin was definitely self confident and he knew it's good and he loved it and it's this of course is a symbol of going to into a deep depression completely deep depression and then what comes next left hand what is this times and right hand what is this a little bit similar to that and a little bit also similar to the previous Da da 
dam ta da da so we have so finally they are together this uh, ground uh, to a very sad it's like a, the ending is really very sad um, it's a masterpiece and I, I, I could talk for eight for, for hours about it but I strongly invite you to listen to my recording from Tokyo live recording from Tokyo I, I performed in 2017 all the opus and I was very inspired I remember because my was my debut recital in Japan it went extremely well and uh, I was really touched so I strongly recommend you to listen to it. Thank you very much and hope to see you again in the next episode. Bye bye.